Hi everyone, am I audible? Yeah, am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Then allow me to share my screen first. Please tell me if my line is lagging because I'm in my matriculation college and the line is not so stable yet. Okay, All so, right, no problem. Okay, so good morning and hello everyone once again. My name is Chao Min and I'm currently a student in Parat Matriculation College. So today, I'll be introducing to you the Malaysian Matriculation Program and I'm sure most of you here have heard of this program before. It is quite a popular choice among students, I'd say, but there are a few things that you should understand and consider before deciding on your future pathway. So, you know, you, you should not just apply for Matriculation College because everyone says that Matriculation College is good, Matriculation Program is good or whatsoever, okay? So, first, let us understand what is Matriculation Program. Okay, so it is the most popular route for us to enter public universities in Malaysia because it is highly affordable and it saves a lot of time. And the teaching syllabus is in English, but lessons are conducted in mostly Malay. So you can see that yeah, the syllabus is in English, which means that all your lecture notes, your tutorial questions, and also your examinations will be in English. But um, your lessons or the tutorial classes, the lecturers will most probably explain in Malay. So it may take some time for you to adapt to it if you are used to English syllabus, like if you take science and maths in English when you are in secondary school. Okay, so next. Matriculation program is a one-year or two-year program, but the two-year program is only for Bumi Putras. But, and to be more precise, actually it only takes like um, 10 months for us to complete the whole matriculation program for the one-year program that I need. And also next, the entry requirement is as shown in this table. So basically, you have to get C in most of the subjects and also at least a B in mathematics. And next, of course, you have to pass your Sujara subject. However, do take note that, like, this is from my perspective as a non uni student, do take note that there is a racial quota in matriculation program with 90% of, of uni Putra students and only 10% for non uni students. So this means that the placement for non uni Putra students is really very, very limited and the competition to get into, um, to get into this school is really quite high. So of course, you have to get a reasonably good result in SPM, like at least A's in all science subjects and of course um, as many A, A plus as possible for the science subjects and also you need to have good cocoa marks to secure your place. But to clarify here is that this is based on my personal experience and also my observation and it is not official data. Lah. Okay, so yeah, it is also very cost effective as you can see here. The registration fee is only around 600 ringgit and on top of that you get a monthly allowance of 250 ringgit so if you get uh, if you like do a bit of calculation right you notice that you are somehow gaining money when you enroll into matriculation program because you give 600 ringgit for two semester and then you receive 250 ringgit every month Okay, so next, I'll be talking about the program structure in matriculation program. So there are three streams for you to choose from, which is science stream, accounting stream, and also engineering stream. So different colleges, they offer different streams. Like for my matriculation college, uh, KMPK, para, uh, the one in para, they offer science stream and also accounting stream. And for engineering stream, right, they have their own campuses. So if you are interested, like if you're determined to take engineering in the future, then you can get enrolled into this um, engineering stream. So their campuses are in College Matriculasi Kujuru Dara and Kuda, College Matriculasi Kujuru Dara and Johor and so on. And science stream, science stream students, you'll be also divided into two batches, namely the one-year program or the two-year program. For the two-year program, it's, it's called the SES or System Empire Semester. Okay, so next, students' performance is evaluated from two forms of assessments, which are the end of semester exam and also continuous assessment, commonly known as PB or Penilaian Bekerusan. So the grading system is the most common one, CGPA, with 4.0 being the highest for every subject. Okay, so for the subjects, right, you may refer to this table for the subjects offered in matriculation program. So there are three branches in science stream. 
So for life science, if you take pure science subjects, um, if this is what we commonly know, like, like mathematics, chemistry, biology, and physics. And then for physical science, you will take computer science instead of biology. And for computer science students, you will take computer science instead of physics. And for the accounting stream, they will take mathematics, business studies, accounting, and also economics. Okay, next. I'll talk about the mode of event. Okay, so before that, I'd like to add on. Like this one, what I show here is only the core subjects. And we have also we also need to take some mandatory subjects, which are like co curricular subjects. And then we also have Politica Moral. And then we have general studies or commonly known as Pengajian Am. And then we have also we also have English subject to take. And for the English subject, it is more like to prepare you for um the Muet or the Malaysian University English test. Okay, so next, I'll talk about the mode of evaluation for matriculation program. So I would say that actually matriculation program is like an assignment-based program. At 60% of uh, your marks will be from continuous assessments and your end of semester exam only accounts for like 40% of it. So thus, you can see that like continuous assessments it plays a very, very important role in determining your grades. So for continuous assessments, it will be divided into three parts, namely the UPS, the assignments, and also the practical test. So UPS is like a small test that involves a few chapters, and there will be a total of three UPS for each subject in each semester. So it is like a um, due to COVID-19. So the UPS is actually carried out online using Google Form. So we do not have proctors. So it is more like an open, uh, open book test. And then the next one will be assignments. Assignments are a very, very good chance for you to secure your marks. As you may consult your lecturers and then, you know, you have plenty of time to complete it. And what you have to do is just to follow your lecturer's criteria and then follow the marking scheme. So so that you do not lose like any unnecessary marks. In another word, actually you should aim for a perfect score in assignments and your lecturers are definitely willing to help you out. And although two to four weeks are given, you should always avoid last minute works because you may have to make amendments over and over again according to the lecturer's comments. Okay, so for the practical test, it is divided into two sections, which is the manipulative skill test and also the report writing. So basically, you need to conduct an experiment following the procedures and taking all the precaution steps for the manipulative test. And for batch, it is a little bit special because for semester one, we, do, we are not in college, we stay at home due to COVID-19. So we miss the miss the fun, now. like we, we do not carry out the physical experiments, but instead we are required to like record home-based experiment video or just answer an online quiz for the manipulative skill test. And for the report writing, I'm not going to talk much about it because it is actually similar to what you have learned in secondary school. Like, you just have to do the black report. Okay, so you can see, right, like the key here is actually to score as good as possible for continuous assessments so that you won't have to stress yourself out in PSP later. Okay, so for PSPM, it is actually similar to SPM but with the letter P in front. So it is the end of semester exam and the only four subjects, which are like mathematics, chemistry, biology, physics, computer science are involved. So PSPM is a centralized exam controlled by Bahagia Matriculacy of KPM. So it is just like SPM, a centralized exam controlled by the Ministry of Education. And but the questions are much more harder compared to the UPS. And with like you have to write long explanations for every questions and also calculations are involved. So you have to do proper preparation for PSPM. Okay, so here I would like to share like the study environment in our school. So you can see this is our library. It is a very spacious, uh, a very big one, I would say. And then you have, it is air conditioned. So yeah, it is a very comfortable place for you to study. So if you want to focus, then of course you have to go to the library. And then the one uh, on the right side here is our lecture hall. This is the biggest lecture hall because like in one matriculation college, like for my matriculation college, we have actually six lecture halls with five small one and a big one. So this is our lecture hall. You can see 
also uh, with air conditioner. And then here is our uh, academic block. So um, what you have to take note is like Matriculation College it is a very, very huge campus which can accommodate up to 2,000 to 3,000 students. So we have 50 tutorial classes and then we have a lot of labs, like a whole block of labs. So yeah, this is how it looks like in Parat Matriculation College. So for me, I would say that I'm considered lucky to be in Parat Matriculation College because the facilities are quite new and also quite comfortable compared to some of the matriculation colleges. Okay, so here is our dorm. So this is the exterior of our dorm, so just a normal building, I'd say. And then this is how it looks like inside our dorm. So we have like how many stories of five stories of a five story building and then um the toilet is behind me if you can imagine when i'm taking this picture so yeah and then this one is what you have in your dorm in your room i'd say like you have your own cupboard and then a bed of course and then also a table yeah just something like that lah. but of course you have to take note like um, we have public toilets and we don't have air conditioner in our room so it will be a little bit hotter. Okay, so after listening to all of these um, explanation or like sharing about matriculation college so now I'm going to tell you why you should consider matriculation and why you should not consider matriculation. So, well, it is a faster route to university as it is only a 10-month program compared to STPM, which takes one and a half year. Okay, so if you have a really, really tight budget, and then matriculation is definitely your choice because you only have to pay 600 ringgit registration fee for two semesters. You, have, you only have to pay once. And then there will be no extra charges for your accommodation, your transportation or whatnot. But, and even the soft copy of all study materials will be given by a lecturers and you do not have to pay for it. So the food sold in the cafe is also quite cheap and affordable. So yeah, it is really a very good choice for you. It is a very cost-effective program, I would say. And then the other reason why you should consider matriculation program is that it is if you want to enter a public university. So I'm not saying that matriculation program the guarantees that you get a seat in a public university. Because it, it also depends on the courses you choose and how you fill in your UPU system. It is uh, anyway, it is like another story already. Uh, but this is definitely the best way for you to enter a public university uh, through the matriculation program. And finally, you'll become more independent and you'll be able to manage your time well in matriculation college. So, like, except for my batch, right? All our seniors will get distributed to matriculation colleges far away from where they live. Like for example, para students, they will get offered to study in uh, Johor Matriculation College, Kelantan Matriculation College, and then uh, you definitely, so you can see like you definitely become more independent as you do not always have the chance to go back home. And also, yeah, you have to like wash your own clothes and then prepare your own food and everything. And since you always need to attend classes from morning until evening, and sometimes even have programs at night or maybe some of your lecturers have lessons at night so you'll be more disciplined and learn to manage your time well okay so and then next on the other hand why you should not choose matriculation program so if you are considering overseas universities then matriculation program is not for you because it is specifically designed for you to enter into local universities but of course it is also recognized like by, like by some of the outstanding universities in countries like Australia and also New Zealand. So you have to do more research about it if you want to push, pursue your tertiary studies overseas but you want to take matriculation program. But like if you get enrolled into matriculation program already and then you want you also have a chance to go overseas. Like we have um we have a scholarship or a program called the program from Handalan Pelaja Chamalang in which you you will be given a scholarship to study overseas in countries like UK, Australia, New Zealand but you, the condition is that you have to become a lecturer when you come back to Malaysia in the future. 
Okay, so next, if you prefer a more challenging pre-university course, then you should consider another pre-U program indeed. In yeah. But uh, the disclaimer here is that um, syllabus in matriculation college is not easy as you will have to learn about like 10 long topics in a short 5 month semester. But it is undeniably easy for you to get an A or score a 4.0 in matriculation college compared to the other pre-U courses because like, yeah, we are a it is more like an assignment-based program. Lah. Okay, so next, if you are eager to have a wholesome and well-rounded experience in pre-U, then this will not be ideal for you either. Because if you are like expecting state-of-art facilities and then on going to the shopping malls every weekend to relax or do grocery shopping with your friends, you may consider other pre-U courses indeed. Because uh, we are not allowed to go out of our colleges except during except during like uh, festive seasons uh, or, or like it's sem and semester break okay so however the matriculation college they do organize a lot of competitions and fun activities for you to take part in so you're not, not actually feel bored in college then. and then uh, lastly time is extremely compact and it may be stressful for some of you if especially like if you're not doing your revision regularly as I've mentioned earlier, you need to cram more than 10 topics for every subject in 5 months. So you, your lecturers will be having a lot of extra classes. Some of the lecturers even have lessons at night, leaving like homework and assignments. So you may find it stressful sometimes if you do not manage your time well. And please avoid last minute work, okay? So that is really my advice because um, I've I have the experience before and it is really really stressful if you do not if you do not manage your time well. Okay, so and before I end my sharing today, let me tell you a little bit of my personal experience because you may wonder why did I choose matriculation program over the other PU courses. So because this question, right, like I get it from some of my matriculation college friends too. So I'm going to share with you because I am a GPS scholar and with my SPM results, actually, I can apply for scholarships to study overseas too. But why do I apply for matriculation program? It is because I want to study medicine and I want to get into a public university. So you can see that the point, the key point here is I want to study medicine, the first point. And the second point is I want to study in a public university. So if you're interested in medicine, then maybe you have noticed that um, almost none of the scholarship bodies, they offer scholarships for medicine, except JPA. And even JPA, they only uh, offer for local university. Lah. But this is from my research. Of course, if you got any scholarship uh, to study overseas, yeah. Because the tuition fee for medicine is too high. Lah. And then I'm determined to study medicine like I really have considered carefully and I'm very sure of my in the future. So I didn't apply for any scholarship overseas after getting SPM results last time. Then why did I choose matriculation program instead of yeah, the pre-U courses? The, uh, this is solely because I want to get into a public university and matriculation college for me, like for myself, it is the best choice for me. Um, actually, I got an offer from Asasi too, but I rejected it because I rejected it like, because I want a wider range of choices when entering into public universities in the future. Like I'm not so sure which which university I want to get enrolled into, so I reject my offer in Asasi. But in this context, I, I'm not saying that the other PU courses are bad or whatsoever, okay? But this is just my choice. So my advice for you is that there is nothing like which PU course is the best, but it is like how you should choose the, metric, the PU course that best suits you based on your aim and also your dream in the future. So yeah, think carefully before making any decision because it may lead to a totally different outcome in the future. Okay, so I guess that's all from me.